Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about global warming. Now you may say, why are you smiling and enthusiastic? This is like a negative topic. And this is one of the things I want to engage with. Um, I want to talk about global warming in an empowering way, because I think there is a ton of stuff that you can do to not only uh, help protect against global warming and global climate change, but also to help address a whole bunch of other environmental issues at the same time. Now if you don't necessarily believe in global warming, I want to say two things. First of all, there's been a growing scientific consensus over my life in support of global warming, and I would encourage you to go out and do your own research, and make sure that you're looking at different like scientific organizations, because there are some groups that are not as scientific. But the second thing that I want to talk about, if you don't necessarily believe in global warming, or if you know people who don't, I want you to think about what is advocated by people who want to uh, protect against or prevent global warming. And if you go through this video and listen to it, you'll realize that the things that I'm advocating for, and most of the things that you can do to help stop uh, global warming, they involve uh, stopping the burning of fossil fuels. And fossil fuels don't just contribute to carbon dioxide emissions, they cause a whole bunch of other things, like pollutants to enter the environment. Like coal is a major source of mercury, which becomes a contaminant in fish. And uh, all the pollution from cars and vehicles contributes to smog and things like that. So when you help reduce carbon emissions, you're also helping reduce all this other pollution that has negative impacts both on humans and on uh, other animals and plants and ecosystems in the environment. So it's like reducing carbon emissions is kind of like a win-win. It's just something that benefits everyone. And as I'll talk about a little bit too, it also helps you to live better and to save money and to become like more prosperous and have a higher quality of life. So what can you do personally to help uh, combat global warming and reduce carbon emissions? There's a crap ton of stuff, and I want to start by talking about consumption of physical material objects. Like I am wearing uh, Two, two shirts that I bought from a thrift store, and one of the things that you can do to uh, reduce resource usage in society as a whole is to buy used things and take care of the things that you own. Like if you buy a new shirt and then you wear the shirt a few times and throw it out, that's kind of like the worst case scenario, or the worst case scenario would be buy it and you never wear it at all. Um, you're not really getting much value or enjoyment out of it. But it still took resources in society to create that shirt. Uh, and the same goes for everything. It can go for big items like a car and a home, or uh, electronics, all those things. Basically, the more mileage you get out of the stuff that you buy, uh, the like more enjoyment you're getting out of life, and the more value you're getting relative to the cost of production. And the cost of producing these things includes carbon emissions, because it takes energy, and often materials, and often transportation to get it to the store, and carbon emissions are being generated by all those things. So that's an indirect thing that you actually have a tremendous amount of control over. Like by using resources more efficiently, by being disciplined about what you buy, and also by taking care of the things you own, and not throwing them out, but trying to either reuse them, resell them, which can get you a lot more money, or give them to people you know, or give them away to like a thrift store. By doing any of those things, you are helping to uh, reduce the amount of pollution, and to indirectly protect against global warming, global climate change. Another thing you can do is use of energy in your home. Uh, I have recently switched all the light bulbs that I own to LEDs, and it's great because it crease, uh, keeps my electric bill really low, so it saves me money, but it's also very efficient, so I'm using less energy. If you live in a state that has electric choice, and you can choose your electric provider, Pennsylvania is one of these states, I would strongly encourage you to switch to one that does 100% uh, non-emitting uh, energy. I don't want to say renewable energy, because renewable energy sometimes includes biomass energy, which can involve burning things. So I'm talking like mainly wind power and solar are the best ones to go to. Not a big fan of hydropower, because that causes other environmental consequences. 
I've been really surprised at how cheap it is when you buy wind power on the open market. Like in Pennsylvania, I bought wind power and it cost maybe one cent more per kilowatt hour. Like the price goes up. It's sometimes like nine cents a kilowatt hour, or like 12 cents a kilowatt hour. It's not always the same because it's a free market, but generally it's not a lot more expensive to get wind power. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no reason not to do it. I wish everybody would switch to wind and solar power in those states that had electric choice. And if you're doing things like buying LED bulbs, you're going to keep your electric bill really low anyway, so you're not going to have to pay as much anyway. Like when you do the two things combined, you still end up paying less. What is more you can do to reduce carbon emissions? I think transportation and vehicles are a huge contributor, uh, especially in the U.S., but I think in a lot of countries. Uh, a huge contributor to carbon emissions and to pollution in general. So anything that you do to help drive less or spend less time like uh, in the car or in vehicles that are b burning fuel, that, or to, to promote the use of more fuel efficient vehicles is going to help. I have noticed that in the United States it can be really hard to avoid using a car. I own a car, and I have a hybrid car, but it still uses fuel. And so it's like buying a more fuel efficient car is good, but it's not like the whole picture. I think it's really important to cut down your use of a car. And I have found that like the best way to do this is by thinking very carefully about where you live, and making a commitment to live in a walkable community. This is going to severely constrain the areas in which you live. Like right now I live in Delaware, but Delaware is mostly pretty suburban and car oriented. So I'm in the town of Newark, where the University of Delaware is. There are not that many other places in Delaware that are as walkable as this. So it does limit where you live. On the other hand, there's so many tangential benefits. Like if you live in a walkable area, you'll walk more, you'll spend less time in the car, you'll be healthier, you'll be happier. It's also easier to get to know your neighbors and easier to connect with businesses around you if you can walk to them. So there's these huge benefits to living like this. So it's not like you're like, oh, I'm doing this thing that's preventing global warming, but it's a trade-off and it's making my life suck. It's like, no, no, no. It's like, I'm doing this thing that is freaking awesome and I want to do it for like 16 different reasons, and it's happening to protect against global warming. Last thing I want to talk about is political activism and political views. Uh, there are people with a wide range of political views that watch this channel, and I think that's really great. So I'm not going to say like, oh, support this candidate or support this party, but I want to talk about issues. There's some unpopular stances that I take that I think are critically important to protecting against global warming. And one of them is that I think it is really, would be really beneficial to raise the gas tax in the United States. I know it's an unpopular stance, people don't want to pay more money at the pump, but if gas is cheap, people burn more fuel, and if gas is expensive, it sparks conservation, and it's like a market-based incentive. And if you're concerned that that's regressive, there are other things you can do to make it like more progressive. Like one thing I like is raising the gas ta tax and taking that money and putting it towards public transportation, because that most benefits disadvantaged people who don't have access to cars. Uh, right now, those people are pretty screwed in much of the U.S. They really don't have many good options. So I, I would rather sort of do that kind of model because it helps those people, but it also helps reduce pollution because if you raise the gas tax, people will drive less because gas is more expensive. Uh, so I see it as a win-win. Maybe you don't see it that way. There are other things you can do too. I think in general, like if you are getting involved with municipal governments or state governments, anything that you are doing to increase the cost of electricity or increase the cost of anything that generates carbon emissions, I think that that is a good, good like political solution for uh, protecting against global warming. And you can take that extra money and use that to lower other taxes. I hate things like income tax. Like why are you taxing someone working when you could be taxing pollution, basically? Like if you tax something, you kind of create a disincentive for it. Um, that's my general political approach, uh, supporting those things, writing to your politicians, writing letters, getting involved in that kind of activism. Uh, I think that that can make a big difference. 
So anyway, this is my video. I hope you feel really empowered. I hope you feel like, hey, global warming is something that I can do something about, and by doing something about it, I'm going to be making these life choices that will have all these other cascading benefits in other aspects of my life. That's how I feel, and I feel pumped when I think about it. Thank you.